Good evening, ladies and gents. Uh, we have a miracle tonight. We have all the videos in place. And people who didn't have a camera before even have a camera tonight. So we have people all over the place. Amazing. So this is our best video yet. This is fantastic. Thank you all for being in your places with bright, shiny faces. I know Mike had to struggle to get time off from work. And Lynn had to struggle and get a camera. And it's just, yeah. So it's it's been a lot of fun. So we I have... Forget, we were actually, amazing. I did forget that uh, Mink and I actually talked last night about the, that I was supposed to remind people if <laughs> that needed to happen. But I guess it didn't matter. That's why I put mm -hmm. it in the chat. Yep. He had it in chat, so it was it was okay. We managed, we managed to get off an hour early, so it's all good. Hey, let me do this for everyone. Fantastic. <laughs> well, very good. Let's see if I can get my picture just a little bit better centered there. Mine's kind of off in the boonies a bit. Try to get me. There we go. That's close enough for government work. Okay, last episode, they went up to Argenvost Hold and were rather surprised when they discovered their uh, <coughs> friend, Aragal, waiting outside and apparently looking over the premises of Argenvost Hold uh, and making comments about how he planned to use it for a future residence with uh, somewhat of a smirk after he was studying this dragon statue on the outside, he finally rode away with his bodyguards, and it left some questions in the mind of the party, and they began to kind of investigate the dragon statue, discovered that it seemed to be puffing a bit of coal. They weren't quite sure what it was going to do, so they decided to try and go around the south side where the wall is broken down and the towers have crumbled and sneak in that way. As it turned out, that way was occupied by about a dozen gigantic spiders that proceeded to drop on them. And they had a bit of a battle to clear that out, but came out of it in pretty good shape. They now are preparing to actually move on into the dungeon itself. There's a bit of a cold wind is sweeping through the, these ruins and through the holes in the walls. And at times the wind almost seems to have voices. It seems to swirl around you as if it's studying you, watching you as you move. Dust particles will swirl up around you and for a moment it'll almost, you almost feel like there's something touching you. Long lost memories seem to hang in this place in a rather eerie fashion. You have three doors to the north of you, and you can enter into them. They are double doors. What are you going to do? It looks like it is clear and there's no more spiders on the ceiling. I'm just going to take a look around, make sure, because I, I still see like fog and whatnot. Uh, from the dynamic lighting, I'm just looking around, I guess. To uh, let the people, again, I like to do this once in a while, to let the video watchers see what kind of experience the players are having. This is what they are seeing. Every, the walls and the large items and pillars and things are blocking their view. So they don't have a clear view of everything that's going on around them or what, even what the rest of the castle looks like. They are just uh, trying to move around. You will notice, Dirac, as you move in, that there are some windows giving a little bit of dim light through them. They are not clear glass windows. They're like crackly glass uh, panes sort of things. So there does seem to be a little bit of dim light that, that comes in through some of the windows, which gives you the hint that much of the castle might have these windows in it. Okay. Is everyone all right? Did anyone get hurt? <clears throat> I think I was the only one that took damage during the fight. My clothes are a little sticky, but I'm otherwise fine. <laughs> <funny. laughs> 
Hey, what you do on your own time? <laughs> you, uh, you look a little scratched. Come here. Uh, I just Ooh. tell him like one moment, and I'm like pressing my foot because like I see this here is cracked. I'm assuming that's cracked on the floor, no, that, not the ceiling. Right? No, that is cobwebs remaining from the spiders. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought it was cracked. Uh, a cracked floor. Never mind. <laughs> I would have thought the same thing too. It kind of does look like a like something impacted and broke it. Yeah. All right. So I go over to Vlad. I will use my bandages. Wait, are we taking a short rest? No, well, you're it's you're. Just... It's not oh, truly no, you're... a short rest. Yeah. You're just. He's just doing some bandaging up to get a little bit of hit points back. So how much? Patch, 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 patch. Twenty total hit points returned. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was almost the max roll. I'm still uh, not at full though. You didn't top me off. You I'll put us. Two good berries. <laughs> no, you, you we'll, we'll save the good berries in case we de do desperately need them. I'm, I'm, I'm almost at topped off. You put us. will move I to mean... this door and listen to see if he can uh, hear anything on the other side. All you I hear mean... is a whistle of wind coming through the doors. It's rather chilly. There's a there's a wind coming through the cracks of the doors. Then I Before guess we so... advance anymore, I believe we could do with some scouting. Uh, one of my abilities is to not... It makes it difficult for people to attack me directly. Uh, or another person that I designate. Uh, if someone wanted to go in and do scouting and then return, they would be relatively safe during this time of one minute. How about we send Dirac? He's the most resilient and he enjoys sneaking around. I'll agree to this. Uh. What seriously, is it, guys. guys. Seriously. What's the problem? No, just nothing. Never mind. Problem? No you problem. <laughs> Alright. Dirac, step up to the door. You will have 60 seconds. Okay. I will wait for a POTUS to move. Alright. I will cast Sanctuary on... Go. Alright, I'm gonna go through. Okay, uh, let nope, me... I can't go through. Right, let me uh, remove the doorway there on the dynamic lighting so that you can uh, go through there. As a matter of fact, I'll just take all three of the doors off at this point so that okay. we don't have to worry about them. I'm walking through. You see an empty foyer hall. It is clearly a reception hall meant for people, for receiving guests and things. The, it, it has the feeling almost as if you've stepped into a king's tomb. Um, there on the, you see these steps that are up to your right that go up to the upper floor. And yes, and, um, at the top of the first flight of stairs on the wall is an enormous tapestry of an elegant looking lord in, in gleaming silver armor, very brilliant silver armor, standing in a very dramatic and heroic sort of pose, the, the kind of thing where a lord paints himself as the hero of the realm sort of thing. And up around the balcony area that you can see across from you and you can assume above you as well there is there are alabaster statues that you can just barely see on the back wall of the the um, balcony uh, they they're beautiful white they they look like they might be a little bit dusty but at one time they were just gleaming white statues that are on this and it looks like statues of men to your left are the entry doors. You can assume that you would have come in had you come up the main steps from the outside where the dragon statue was. And some of the statues of, of the men are broken. As you start examining around, you notice some of them have been shattered. But there these were at, time, at one time there were four to six of these statues. 
these statues are on my level or on the upper level? Above you. You can just barely okay. see, like, the top of the head of the ones across from you. The ceiling yep. is about the balcony and, and what would be more or less the ceiling height or is about 10 feet above you but there is also an opening that goes even higher above that you can see upwards of 20 feet to a ceiling with decorative frescoes on it way above you so this is an open foyer with two levels showing okay so then the, these statues they're just on the balcony above me right that's correct all right. And what then, about this door? Is that next to me, or is that also on the balcony? The, uh, if I can actually click this door. That door is on your level. So that's on my level. All right. Yes. I'm going to ignore it for a moment. Uh, what about this door? Is this door my level or upper level? That is or your I level. Say these two door. All doors uh, that you can see. Uh, yeah, all of the doors are on your level. All right. Um, as as Durak runs through, Vlad suddenly cocks his head and turns to the rest of the group. Wasn't one of Strahd's uh, pseudonyms Lord Vasily von Holt? I don't know if it has anything to do with this place, just pointing it out. It was Holtz, by the way, with a Z on the end. So. Oh, Holtz. Okay. I thought it was Holt. What? Uh, let me give you OOC, Lee. This is uh, basically uh, Germanic hold. H-O-L-T is hold. H-O-L-D in English. Uh, this basically means the hold of Argenvost. Argenvost hold. Okay. Uh, I just moved up a little further. I was going towards this door. Mm -hmm. When I notice that this is an open door that's yes, on my level is. again, yes, and, and would I see this? Because I do kind of see you it. do see a statue in the corner. It is a metallic, a, a white metallic statue of some kind. Um, looks silverish, sort of metal, uh, and it is of a knight, and he is wearing a helm with enormous dragon wings on it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to roll stealth because I'm going to see about trying to get through possibly one of these doors with the sanctuary still on me. Keeping in mind, uh, you probably have about 35 to 45 seconds. I'm, I'm assuming that I, I probably yeah. have gone through half yeah, of Yeah, my description across. would be completely eliminated out of this. He's walked through quickly, looked around, seen these things, and walked across the room. So, yeah. The room is right. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet from, from north to south. So it's a pretty big room. I would probably say that's probably only 15 seconds then because I can move at 40 feet per turn. And that's not a, a good stealth roll, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to try and creak open this door all right let if, me, I, if it's able to open let me take that door off and well back in the forum <laughs> you can see into a room uh, that has a lot of broken furniture in it there is a fireplace in the uh, to your left that there is an odd crackling sound coming out of it but there seems to be no fire in it but it there is a there is a hint of a sound like a crackling fireplace in uh the sound coming from that fireplace but there is no fire that you can see okay i'm going to peek my head in because i can't really see the closest corner right here i don't see anything else besides the that fireplace that may be crackling uh, nothing terribly important. It's a wood paneled den and it's been totally ransacked. It looks like the furniture and cabinetry has intentionally been been bashed and just broken into pieces all over the place. The The hearth is quite cold even though you can hear this this residue crackling. sound of a crackling fire. The hearth is quite cold and it it sits between two narrow windows, again, allowing dim light to come into the room. And there is a sarcophagus on the north wall. It's made of black wood and has a queen's effigy carved into its lid. 
I probably wouldn't understand that. I'll just say that there's a coffin in there. All right, I'm assuming well, that... Well, I'm, I'm just dis describing it all oc so it doesn't, you don't yeah. have to understand the words. Yep. Uh, I'm assuming that when I go through, the, uh, try to peek through this door, that my sanctuary is probably going to run out. It's, so I'm just you're gonna... getting about to the end of it, yeah. Close, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to explore this room that I'm standing in front of okay. before I call for the others. When you look into that room, you see large wine casks, uh, obviously the the household wine storage. You can see on one of the nearest um, uh, um, casks that it has the Wizard of Wine symbol on it and that there there are a number of, it looks like the Champagne du Lestamp, which was their finest one. As the, how forcefully did you open the door? Were you trying to make a little bit of sound, trying to be quiet? What were you trying Try, to do? Trying to be as quiet as I can. Like I said, I only rolled a four, so it's as good as what that was for myself. Um, the door makes a bit of a creaking sound. The hinges are old and rusting. And as the door creaks open, you hear a startled yip from the north end of the room somewhere. I close the door. Is there a way for me to bar it? No. Like no. If, if I could put a weapon over handles or something? No, there's not really any way to bar these doors. They were they were formal entryway doors and things and not intended for defense on this level at all. The outer door, the big one towards the stairs, you can bar, but not these. Okay. Uh, I, I just close the door and back up a bit to keep an eye on it, and I'm going to call, I think I found something. Try to be as quiet as I can in case there's... Give me a perception pre roll, please. You're talking to us? No, Dirac. Wait, me? Yes. I'm, I'm the one calling out. Yes, give me a perception roll when you do that. Oh, okay. That's a six. You call out. Okay. We... It's... My spell should have about worn off by now. Yes, it is off. And I'm, and I'm not yelling. And, as, that would be and, a, and as as has my uh, sanctuary, my uh, armor spell. I thought we would have had nine minutes for that. Well, it's it, yeah, it was during the fight and during there was been a lot going on, yeah. so I'd say we're getting to the end of it. Yes. Okay. All right, we'll call it that then. Probably around the time you get back to us is when it expired. Well, I, mm -hmm. I'm not going back. I'm trying to call for people in case this thing tries to burst out. Well, it's been far more than a minute, and he has not returned yet, but neither has the Ben Temple. Uh, he also isn't roaring in extreme anger right now, which is usually the case if I find something mean. <laughs> okay, so... Just, just for the record, your best idea was to send Durak, the one person who is not <laughs> the most stealthiest person in this group, uh, and I... unable to properly communicate from a long distance, to go seek out ahead of everyone else. I'm just making sure I got that right. right. That well, is like okay. terrible tactics. Uh, tell me this, Sylvia. When you go <laughs> fishing. Is it more important that your lure looks really, really convincing, or that the line is very strong? You know what? You've convinced me. Any POTUS walks through the <laughs> Clank, 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 clank. There's the next I, just said, person. I just said I could do it to a person. The POTUS and Durak were the only ones who spoke up. Clank, 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 clank. <laughs> Yes, thunderclap. Yeah, we have a, we have a lot of of thunder clanking. You stomp with her, you shake ground, make all the pebbles start dancing. I'm are Sylvia and Victor here. going to remain, or are they going to come inside the room? Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow. Sylvia's just gonna look at Victor and go. Am I the only one speaking with? Is the crazy one actually speaking with logic here, or is it just me? 
Victor just kind of sighs, turns into a bat, and flies along. <laughs> I mean, I I understand perfectly. I am like you 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 technically are the better stealth person. I am better stealthier than both Apotis or Vlad, but I'm I'm also a lot sturdier than you. Yeah, it, it, it's it's That's well, the it's line a, thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I also still have dimension to where I could have gotten away from things a lot quicker than most people. Well, as it turns out, the room seems to have the large room seems to have no uh, no threats in it. So uh, where where is everybody going to go? I'm just standing uh, right here. I have my shield and spear at the ready, just in case. Are you looking at a doorway door. so we can see you, or? I'm uh here. So come over here, and then you'll see me. Hopefully, well, I can. I can see you from where I'm at. Okay. I probably I hear. I I hear someone loud coming from yeah, the plate armor. Point. Yeah, you can hear their footsteps coming in. Victor, are you joining them or staying in the spider room? Can you hear uh, yeah, I just kind of flap along after them. I don't want. I generally don't want to get too close in case the uh, sword comes. sword comes out. Yeah. Okay. Um, as the, as most of you enter this room, the wind sound for a moment goes dead quiet, which is the first time that the wind has been totally quiet in a while, and there suddenly across the floor. As you look, there is a shadow that moves across the floor. And as you look down, you kind of jump and look down at the floor to see what the shadow is. It is distinctly in the form of a dragon that moves across the floor. And as it does so, you hear a dragon's hiss come suddenly out of the sound of the castle. I'm awake. I, I also, as oh, soon as I saw that, I flipped down my eye of death, my eye of death. I I do want to say something to the DM. I think I see something. I'm not going to move my character to look at it, but I think I see something right here. Uh, you see a chair. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure that wasn't those like door, you know. Those doors are open. Yes. <laughs> Anything you can see, you can see. Yeah, I see only the tip of it. I, I didn't know if it was like maybe okay. it's a monster that's probably now aware of me or not. No, I... Okay, just just want to make sure. No, nope, you're fine. The shadow disappears at almost as fast as it comes, and as it does, you can hear the wind whistling again. Did I see anything with my eye of death? Perception? You did not. No. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I believe was... it's. I believe this would be a good time for me to be able to tell if we are about to walk into any magical traps. I will Agreed. begin. I will begin ritual casting, detect magic. Okay, that takes how long? It takes minutes and six seconds. Okie doke. So you guys are delaying in this room while that gets oh, cast, no. I assume. You guys go ahead. I'm just. Yeah. Um, when I did hear that yip, could I tell if it was like a big thing or a small thing that yip, like Give... a dog or maybe a big monster? Not from your perception roll. No. Big monster named Fluffy. Okay. Yep. You. It did not sound vi vicious. It sounded startled. That's the only startled? thing you okay. know. I seen that Vlad is doing stuff that I've seen him do ritual casting before. I look to the others. There is something in this room, and I'm pointing with my spear directly in front of me. He means the room to the north of him, of course. Yep, yep, that will uh, be this room. I guess I'll back. All right, I'll go in first, and then I'm gonna go ahead and open the doors again. This time, walking through. As you enter in, you hear, uh, it, you don't really know, but it kind of sounds like maybe some rats are scrabbling in the far northeast corner of the room. I move 
through the cask, then I'm, again, weapon and shield at the ready, and I'm kind of looking between them, and if I can go underneath, I look underneath. As you going. get from to the very last cask, you see an arm pull back very suddenly like it's trying to to shrink into the corner. It looks like a humanoid arm. And as you come around the corner of that cask, ready and prepared, you come face to face with a dusk elf. A dusk elf? Oh, didn't we meet those guys earlier on? The drow, yeah. We met a couple of them. They're, 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 they're not drow. They're not drow. They're specifically not drow, but they uh, they are um, they're very well, dark-skinned, and they have dark hair, not white hair. Ouch. Well, we met Dusk Elves then at the Vistani. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he is, he looks quite wounded. He is holding a weapon up in front of him, desperately trying not to uh, be seen. He's shrunk down as far as he can into the corner, kind of tucked under the barrel. And he's got his eyes closed, almost as if he's hoping that if he really squishes his eyes closed very tight, maybe you won't notice him. I look back to Apodis and I'm putting my spear back, kind of showing him that whatever it is, it's not a threat. And then I'm going to... What are you look. saying? I see a dusk elf. He, as you say yeah. this, he what? slowly opens his eyes, like one eye at a time. He opens it and looks up at you. Uh, he, uh, he looks to be a young dusk elf, but that doesn't mean much. He looks like if, if he was a human, you would think he was maybe 17. But that doesn't mean a great deal with elves. You, you don't really have any idea. But he is he's like holding a rather dented short sword up in front of him. Like, if you come closer, I'm going to stab you with this. Mm -hmm. It's all right, young one. You don't need to fear me. Who are you? My name is Dirok. And I am with... Oh, what do we call ourselves? The the Dawn Watch? Dawn Watch. Dawn Watch, okay. Dawn Watch and Co. And I am with the Dawn Watch. Wait, you were one of the... You came to the camp. I remember seeing you from a distance. You are the ones... You are... Did the Vistani send you? No. The village Velaki has told us about this place and we've come to uh what's the correct word to use investigate Cleanse. we've come to investigate uh, inspect uh, search Cleanse. okay you i i don't Cleanse. use that word. i don't, don't use that word we've come to investigate to see if there is something we can do to fix this place <sighs> oh and he sags down on the ground like a great weight has lifted off of his shoulder. He's just, he, he just, you can just see all the stress just drop out of him. I was sure they were coming in after me. I was just sure of it. Who? This Donny, Aragal, and those others. I knew they were coming after me. They did not l let us know that you were in here. I, I reach out a hand to help him out. He stands up and he's kind of wobbly on his legs and he looks like he has definitely seen better days. He is not in good shape. Uh, I go through my pack. I'm going to give him one of my rations that I don't think I've ever gotten rid of. <laughs> he it's grabs... He moldy. He, what? He, he takes it quite readily out of your hand and starts eating it. I, I've been hiding here for days. Well, you don't have to worry about the Vistani men that were out here. They've gone and left. I hope so. I, I, uh, I, I decided I couldn't take it in the camp any longer, and I, I left, and they... They sent people after me. It was not long after 
Arabel was found. Uh, Arab, uh, uh, Arab Gal himself got after your visit. He, he became very overbearing and very arrogant. He and Arabel were were stalking around, talking about how they would be nobles and they would rule Barovia. And finally, I left. I couldn't stand it anymore. And they sent people after me. Aragorn himself came after me. That's unfortunate. The re I believe the reason why he's acting this way is because of our group. I'm looking at his sword. Can I see your weapon? He looks hesitant because out of sight of a, a bow, that's all he's got for defense. But finally, he... After a moment, he turns it around, hilt first, and hands it to you. I'm um, inspector. You said it was a bad sword, right? It it has it is a fairly decently made sword, but it has been in battle recently and it's dented. It's in bad, rather bad shape, like he is. It looks like he's uh, been fighting a lot of things. And Vlad, I mean, yes. You detect some kind of evocation magic coming from uh, the room with the fake crackling in the fireplace. That would be the the door to the left, the ones the 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 left okay. one. I've <clears throat> I've kind of been waiting for you guys to finish up in there yep. before I. Yep, I'm to... I'm gonna finish up real quick. Uh, like I've been around weapons. Can I expect that this is probably not a good weapon? It's not, no, it's no high quality weapon. It's yeah, it's a decent weapon, a typical weapon of the, the type that the elves made, but it is, he is no noble. He doesn't have anything of great value. I'm going to, I'm going to put that in my pack. I'm going to take out one of my hand axes and hand that to him hilt first. Your sword's no good. You can use this instead. He looks it over and kind of, uh, swings it away from you, you know, testing its weight and a few things as you hand it to him. Uh, it's got a different weight on the head, but thank you, it's better than what I had. It is. You get used to it if you practice with it. Come out, I have some friends uh, outside that will probably be able to help you out, and I'm gonna look at the POTUS and start walking towards him. I see you've made a new friend. Indeed, I did not catch your name, young one. I am Savid. Savid. I am Dirac. I... Uh, I am... Yes, he's Savid, but what is his name? <laughs> I am young in comparison to the other Dusk Elves, but I don't think I am young in terms of your ages. No, probably not. You just look at... All you elves are different. <laughs> Sylvia, we picked up another stray. And then he comes back up. I'm just yep. going to back away from the door. I was like, why are you telling me this? I don't <laughs> own the strays. <laughs> oh, you don't own the strays. You just tend to keep them. No, I don't. You had a few children following you, but I think Dirac had as many as you did. Yep, I'm, I'm probably the more of the stray master, actually. <laughs> He oh. comes out and looks around at the group of you, and and he, as he recognizes each of you and realizes you're all the same group he's seen before, he relaxes even more, and a slight grin comes across his face. Ah, there I can put this. Welcome back. I have. Who are you? I am they Savid. Found Stray. This is Savid. He's been in here. Quite the story with him and. Arugal, I kind of say with like a little venom to his name. Apparently he wasn't true. here to search the house to look for a new place to live, but to search for this Dusk Elf here. And why is that? Apparently he was one of the Dusk Elves among the Vistani and decided to flee after we had saved the girl. From uh, the the mad fisherman, the one that tried to drown her. Uh, Vlad turns to Zavid. Why would they still need care if you? They're not keeping you prisoner at their camp, as far as I know. I thought they were slaves. 
Uh, no, they're not slaves, but he's going to tell oh, you the okay. story. Okay. Um, we, I, we have a long history with the Dread Lord, and he punished us by making it so that we could not leave this land, and we had overseers who have kept an eye on us through the centuries. And these are, that particular group of Vistani have been assigned this task. They do not like us to move about freely without one of them with us. But I, I said some things in camp about his arrogance and it was not taken well. I. I don't know if even my uncle and the others will want me back because I angered them so, but I I don't know where I'm going to go. We do have a stronghold in Vallaki. We could... Uh, well, not... Uh, a a strong, stronghold. stronghold in the sense that the whole village is a stronghold against the, the devil. We do have a... Base camp, in a way, uh, in Velaki. Well, well, hold on a second. Before we go sending him back towards where... No, he's coming with us. We won't I send was... him out on his own. Mm. I was thinking we might take him with us when we leave. Uh, I mean, besides that, I mean, like, just... Instead of keeping him close to the village where... Shit for hit... Shit for... Jerk face is apparently base camping right now also. I don't think they actually moved, did they? Did they? Okay, so what happened after as we helped find them? The... Did they leave the area after we, no, after we left? No, they, the... they remain there most of the group. time. They rarely travel. It is, They occasionally travel, but not often. It is mostly the other Vistani that travel to and fro. Ergal and Lugash and those, they remain there to keep an eye on us. Even so, the uh, the people the towns... are not friendly with the Vistani and don't allow them inside. Besides exactly. that, he would... How would Ergal know that... What was your name? Savid. Savid. How would Ergal know that Savid was in the town? Especially if he was in the cloister. I wouldn't put it past the jerk to have someone watching this place. That is potential. That just is because potential. just because he seemingly left the left the keep doesn't mean he actually left the keep. I think he's still around, probably looking at other places. Waiting to see if they come out with him. Or maybe yeah. seeing if we come out in general. Well, We'll come out. He won't find this one. No, he will not. And if he does, then I guess we'll have to change the prophecy. You said the uh, lines on the cliff were 1,000 feet? Uh, in were the like big 4, map. In the big map. Not on, okay. uh, not on the smaller maps. On the smaller maps, they tend to be right. 100 uh, or 500, but on the biggest map, it's 1,000. Guys, guys, trust me, I got a plan if we do this. I could smuggle them out, it'd be okay. Let's save that for when we're through with here. Yes, uh, agreed. In any case, in any case, Savid, are you... Well, you look like you are wounded. I encountered several things. I had to fight with the Vistani on the way out of camp, and I ran. They could not, they had to go back for their horses, and I can run faster than they can, so it took them a while to get their horses and chase after me, but I had a fight with them, and then as I was oh, coming around on the cliff, I was attacked by a bunch of those blighted plants. How, how how long ago were they chasing you? A couple of days. So you've been here for a couple of days? Yes, sir. So they would have left sometime before we got back to sometime before we left. They get travel this, time. This, he would have left the camp either while we were in Berez or shortly after we left. 
I'm thinking shortly as we were on our way back from Berez, he probably left. Well, if it's a couple days ago, he it he might have been as we were on our way to Berez. Might have been That's on true, our true. way to Berez. True, true, true. In any case, time blurs so much. He I looks back hand. and forth between the two of you, and he's he's puzzled by the timing discussion, and he doesn't know what Berez has to do with anything because, of course, he didn't know what's happened there. He just is looking back and forth like he's trying to catch up with all the conversations. I'll reach into my good berry pouch and I'll give Savid one good. Would, it will heal four hit points and give him enough nourishment for the entire day. He is most appreciative. He immediately eats the good berry, and uh, you can see that he looks considerably better. Not 100%, but in much better shape than he was before. Savid, uh, I believe it would be best for you to remain somewhere safe while we go about cleansing this place. If you'd like to go back into that room, and we'll come back for you when we finish here. Let me show you something that you need to know that I found while I was in there. I did a little bit of exploring. I had to find this. I've never been in here before, because most of the Vistani and the definitely the Dusk Elves stay away from it. it is It is rumored that the the souls of the dragon and his knights still haunt this place and we we try not to come here i was hoping it would keep aragol away but he chased me all the way up the hill i could see him coming so i fled inside the castle come and he take he goes inside the room and he goes over to the uh, section of wall that is on the opposite of where you found him and he pushes a couple of times and the wall shifts with a slight grinding sound and you find that there is a secret door that is in the corner right here secret tunnel and it goes in, tunnel. it goes into that room that you saw before okay through That's what I was just about to ask secret uh, secret secret I see this tunnel. and I go well, not a tunnel. It just goes into the next room. It's a secret doorway. Uh, I seen this. I go to uh, Vlad. I don't know if your magic has sensed anything yet, but in the next room is at least a fireplace. That I is... have sensed some sort of magic from the next room. Okay, because there is a fireplace that's making noise but no heat, and there is a large coffin sta standing upright against the wall, right? Yes. Yeah, a this large coffin in... standing upright. It's like on a base, Vlad... just just like a cupboard or something. It's just sitting straight up on the floor. And she said Vlad... it was more of a sarcophagus. I just don't know. I yeah. Rock won't understand the word. It, it looks like Vlad a sarcophagus. It's to... normal at some point. It says, that seems terribly uncomfortable. Vlad <laughs> is going to uh, gently push past Savid and Dirac. And look into the room while slipping down once again his eye of death perception. Yep. I'm going to push, gently push Savid back to his corner and stand in front of him. And, um, I, Vlad, does, you do not see any undead in the room. Uh, the only thing that is active is your detect magic. And it appears as you move into the room to be coming from the area of the fireplace itself. There is... I don't know what is going on. I'm going to pick up one of these. I assume these pieces of ruined furniture are... Yeah, there's legs and um, boards and things I that just, split I just apart. realized something. Mm. When, we, when we came into here... Um, remember, uh, that whole forbidden thing, how I need an invitation to, you know, enter someone's home. Did I... We went in kinda... through a broken area. I don't think that kind of affects it. Um, did I feel any kind of resistance and need to get someone to invite me in? Or was I... You haven't, you haven't trouble? felt, you haven't felt anybody, uh, any presence to have asked 
permission to come in with it. You just there's nobody here outside of Savid. There's just nobody in this downstairs area. It's quite empty. I don't right, think... just, just thought I'd bring it up because I figured if someone lives here, then I probably, you know, may have been made kind of accidentally aware of it. I don't think that it this is anyone's home. Less anyone living. <laughs> At least well, not I, I brought that up OC though, but yeah. So Victor Victor's gonna walk in, he's gonna kinda peer into this coffin because he's curious about this weird arrangement. I see what? him do that. I'm gonna go in fully and try to find a way to close this door so Sophie doesn't possibly get hurt. Okay, I uh, will. We'll call it closed because I deleted it off the map. But uh, it's, okay. it's it's you can close it behind you. Yes. Um, and Victor, you find that the it's hinged on the right side and it has it has somebody has put a rather fancy ornate. Um, brass or gold handle on the left side, uh, which seems very out of place. It has this this like almost Egyptian-looking queen on the sarcophagus in front, and here's this brass handle on the left side of it. So, are you going to like open? A door? Yeah, like a door. Yeah. Um... Yeah, Victor uh, Victor kind of looks to the others and says, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to open this. Uh, are you uh, are you ready? I, I grab my spears. I, so. I, I think I will step back. I'll, I'll stand right next to Victor and I'll have my spear and shield ready. I'll call so, for our Poetus as well. Yeah, Poetus brings his shield and everything. Victor's going to open it and stay behind the door. Gonna be as he opens it, Dirac looks in to see that the inside of the sarcophagus has shelves built into it. And on the shelves are shattered decanters and wine glasses that look like they were once fine crystal. I put my spear back and I say it's just a cabinet. Victor peeks in and he's like, Oh, he sounds very disappointed. <laughs> I, I figured that was going to happen. <laughs> Some of it's it, it really... looks so luxurious. I was really hoping it. Uh, never mind. <laughs> I, 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 I think it would be a little bit about taking it. <laughs> was it dead bolted? <laughs> no, it wasn't dead bolted. It it just opened like a cabinet. The shelves looked like they would be, uh, they've just been, somebody's put in some pieces of wood and set nice quality oak type things on it, but it looks like it could be returned to its sarcophagus state if it, you ever wanted to. Uh, Victor here just like suspected that he had come across like the, the vampire equivalent of like some kind of amazing like Tempur-Pedic like memory <laughs> foam bed just lying around for anybody to take. Well, like, you can, oh yeah. <laughs> you could turn it you could turn it back into that if you wanted to. <laughs> oh man. The Tempurpedic for vampires. Yeah. The uh, crackling gro grows <laughs> this louder. This is the Deluxe Crypt Keeper three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, crackling behind Go you away. in the fireplace grows louder, and all at once, the fire, the the dead, burnt wood and ashes in the fireplace jump into life, full fledged into life, and the flames coalesce into the center and begin to snake upwards. And as they do, they take on the form of a fiery dragon. Uh, I turn to face it, and I put my spear at the ready again. It does not do anything. The fire crackles and hisses almost as if it were alive, but nothing seems to happen. I'm making it larger just so you can get a better picture of what that looks like, but that's that's what's in the fireplace. It is probably about three feet high that is in this large 
open fireplace with these flames around it and it just snakes its head back and forth and just seems to look at you staring at you but does not attack does not do anything Vlad is going to I was trying to say this earlier Vlad is going to pick up a piece of like a broken chair leg and toss it towards the snake thing it doesn't do anything as far as attacking, but it does react. It turns slowly towards you as you throw this, and its eyes kind of glow as it watches you. It seems to be staring at you, and as if it is preparing, but it doesn't actually do anything to you. It is just you threw something at it, so it is turning to watch you <laughs> i will say four times in common celestial draconic and abyssal greetings and see if it reacts to any of those your accent's horrible but <laughs> <laughs> oh it is actually a very like traveler's guide to draconic yeah <laughs> <laughs> please to be Gato. telling me where i find Mr. room of the My rest mother... You're, my you're, mother you're is a llama. Where the cheese toilet is. My mother is a llama. Yeah. <laughs> the prince. <laughs> all right, all right. The prince we're, jumped we're, over the garden we're gate. Using draconic, please, for the love of the sun gods, let me do. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but does it respond? Does the snake respond? Fire snake respond to any of these things? It hisses and it says in draconic. To you. My knights have fallen into darkness. Save them if you can. <coughs> Show them What's the possible? light they have lost. And with that, the fire burns out. Well, I'm just going to okay. look. Adipotus. What was that about toothbrushes? The uh, Apotus cast prestidigitation to try to bring it. <laughs> Nothing so happens. So that was different. That was uh, uh, something. It wants us to bring the knights back into the light. You want that me to repeat it? Like just an eternal trophy to me. Do you want me to repeat that just for your your usage? Sure, I'll write it down. My knights have fallen into darkness. Save them if you can. Show them the light they have lost. And there was an emphasis on the word light. The sword? Oh. Perhaps the sword. We'll, we'll see. Is there anything else in here that we need to look before look at before moving? It was save. My knights have fallen to darkness. Save them if you can. Show them the light they have lost. And he said it almost as if it was a capitalized L on the word light. Okay. Yeah, Is there a way you know to? Is there a way to Sorry. go back through this door quick? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can now that you know where it is, you can it's it's disguised, but now that you know that it's there, it it moves easily. It's just not unless you know it's there, it's very well disguised. I wanna ask Savid one question. Uh do you know anything about knights here? The Oh, oh. they're very cold. Then they get dark. Of of course I'm not everyone in the same knows. Room with you. Everyone knows that story. We're not from we're, here. I'm just gonna call from the other room. We're 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 not from here and we were under the assumption that there is no one living oh. here anymore. Well, I do not know if there is anyone living, but they say that the souls of the knights still reside here. Lord Argenvost was he was a great lord. He was a dragon, you know. And he had a 
great and brave order of knights called the Silver Knights. They were the defenders of Barovia, and they fought to the end against the Dreadlord, and because they refused to bend the knee to him, he's, the Dreadlord had them all slaughtered, even Lord Argenvost. It is said that he took the skull to his castle. Vlad hey. is going to go up. Oh. Ah, shoot. I thank him for the information. Just tell him that just wait here. We're going to try to figure everything out here. We'll come back for you. There's the dragon, huh? <laughs> no. It looks like a dragon or fire. <laughs> uh, Vlad's going to open this northern door, the one that leads them to what looks like a. Yeah, he put us will back him up. Okie doke. It's John Cena! Boosh! Burr, 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 burr. He, we press the digitate some sparks. <laughs> we all use our magical me. abilities and start a boy band. Um, you open into another room with a great deal of destroyed furniture. There were once velvet drapes that hung from the windows in here. They have clearly been ripped down and uh, cut or torn to shreds. They are in tatters from the bar that supports them above the windows, and portions of them lay on the floor. All of the furniture uh, is in pieces. It was obviously like a parlor, a private parlor. There was a divan and rather comfortable chairs of various sorts that were in here, but they have been smashed almost beyond recognition. The, there was a mural that was hanging, uh, that was painted on the wall and on the far, almost directly across from you. And it has, it looks like somebody has taken an axe or swords or something to it. It is hacked, big chips taken out of it. And it looks like it was a beautiful mural at one time of a, of a gorgeous, um, silver dragon and colorful colorfully plumed birds that were flying over a rich verdant forest and with white clouds up in the sky it was a gorgeous mur mural at one time uh, I'll be sketching what's left of it while sylvia is drawing do i see anything of interest <laughs> either through death perception or magic perception not a thing. This room looks very cold and empty, almost to the point of, of conjuring a kind of a sorrow feeling. You feel what the room was once upon a time, hundreds of years ago, and there's just an intense feeling of sadness as you look at what it remains of the beauty of what must have once existed here. I'm starting to realize... Astrad's requirement is not just the death of the people, but the death of the culture. Uh, not surprising. Take one culture out, replace it with your own. It's kind of what warlords dictator do. Not surprising, no. Just happening. There it was will not another. Remain. What? There was another doorway back in the main hallway. I saw a statue be uh, behind it, but I didn't go through it. What did this statue look like? S some kind of dragon? Actually, I uh, described it as a, a, a knight with a, a knight. winged helm. Winged helm. Uh, oh, but knight I... with a winged helm, sorry. I get confused because I'm dumb. <laughs> you don't suppose Vlad goes and gets within 30 feet of it to see enough to where it's within my detect magic range. You detect no magic coming from the statue. However, there seems to be some kind of magic coming from uh, the table that you can just barely spot around the corner. Uh, the uh, uh, I see something. Some kind of... I don't know what the... I, I wish I knew all the schools really well and could spout them off the top of my head but it's uh, some kind of conjuration 
magic? I see something. I am telling everyone, shush, don't. Do we see it though, or is it as you I step through? As you step through the doors, you see a long table. Several of the chairs are smashed. The table's in pretty good shape. And in the dead center of the table is a large candelabra, which is giving off a very brilliant and actually rather warm light. There are no candles on the candelabra. The ends of where candlesticks might have been uh, are just simply glowing with this warm light. Vlad is going to pull out this the head of the chair right here the head uh, the chair at the head of the table and sit. You are in a very a reasonably comfy dining chair. I thought this might have done something, but this is actually a very comfortable chair. As you sit there, you notice, you hear dripping, and you look to your right, to the map's left in that room, and realize that there is water dripping down the wall from the ceiling, leaking down and dripping into a puddle there against the wall. Let's clean this up. Uh, I wonder what, uh, I'm going to look up. Does it, can I see where it's dripping? There is a crack in the ceiling above you and water is leaking through and running down the wall. Why is there water contained within the room? This is very con- So, so it's coming from the ceiling, right? Yes. Yes. Um... Vlad, I'm, I'm just going to put this plainly. What happens to ice when it melts? Turns into water. Do you think there is ice above us? I mean, it would explain the water while it's dripping. It's not like there's indoor plumbing. I don't think that this has been invented yet. Exactly. Granted, best story I've ever heard about that sort of thing. Hot water for days. The um, to your left, our right, Vlad, as you're sitting at the table, you can see those open doors that go into some kind of formal room. And on either side of the double doors, there are large stained glass windows, indoor stained glass windows. It does not open to the outside. And the, they are still in good shape, and they are beautiful scenes in leaded glass of silver dragons in flight, and again, more of those beautiful plumed birds flying with them. Beyond it, is, there's a dark, misty room that you can't see much of, except that there are some kind of posts or pillars just inside the door. I go up to the window. I don't see anything besides the room. You can't see through the window because it's stained glass. No, I can see through the window. I see that this is a room. I see what yeah. th this is, looks like. You a actually, table of some sort. you actually would not be able to see very well through oh. that. Uh, it would, it would actually, but it, it's a, it's opaque with colors and this mural in the the leaded glass yeah. of. The dragons in flight. You might be able okay. to to catch little glimpse of these pillars and things. It is obviously a tall room. Looks very dramatic. It is again like the entryway. It is a double height room. It goes up double height above you, and is a very tall room with these pillars holding up some kind of um, balcony above you. As you look up, the ceiling only appears to be 10 feet above you, but as you look further out into the room where that table was and so forth, you can see that again it goes up very much higher. It's a double height room. Dirac, please, as Dirac's starting to push forward, he, uh, Vlad puts his hand and says, please, I am the one who is able to see the most. I can give us fair warning. This is starting to sound a lot like the yesterday's. Uh, right. Are you sure about this? 
I can give us Are a you sure? Yes. I can give us hey, a warning. Copyright for jump off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we keep talking over you. The worst dwarf. I'll uh, have you know I was the best dwarf that <laughs> smashed that kobold's head in. Oh my god, alright. You're gonna walk in or I'm gonna start doing it for you. Vlad <laughs> uh, says, please, I, am able, I will be able to warn us if there is some form of undead creature that is about to come out. Uh, with my eye of death perception, I am going to peer into the room before we look at. Before we what look. is the range on that? Uh, it doesn't. You didn't. It doesn't have. Okay. It uh, you. Uh, do, I'll double check it. You do see some forms moving at the far end of the room. They. It says includes but not limited to awareness and recognition of items and undead creatures. Uh. Advantage on all perception rolls involving any form of undead creature, including those in stealth. So I guess as long as I'm able to see them, yeah. then I would have advantage on You can see some hazy forms that are in front of whatever that table is. Um, hold on just a second. I'm going to mute myself and yell something to the house. Just a moment. Let me get But yes, anyways, I'm I'm the best dwarf. I took care of that kobold with one hit. You walked into it without seeing it, and then you immediately set off a stone. Uh, A, I, yes, I did, did not see that kobold, but I killed it in one hit, and I also avoided that Literally trap. every one and... of us killed the kobolds. In one... Anyway, back to this one. <laughs> back that to this was game. last night. <laughs> y'all need y'all y'all need to work on your uh game etiquette. Um <laughs> Vlad, you yes. see what appears to be four men with their backs turned to you, kneeling in front of what Dirac called a table. Kneeling on one knee. Uh and Vlad. And held in front of them, with the points down on the floor, are swords, long swords. Each of them are in the same exact position. Yes, they look like they are armored. Vlad is going to say, Victor, stay back. I am going to take out my mace, cast daylight on it, and toss it into the... All right, one second so that I know everything I need to know about this. Uh, don't I have... There we go. Do you need me to put up the spell description? No, I need to know okay. what they're... Okay. All it does is it highlights them in, like, this glowing light. Where is Vic Victor's well back, I hope? Oh, um, uh, yeah. It highlights yeah, them, and they become more solid-looking. One second. And their heads rise slowly, like they were almost asleep in this position. Their heads rise slowly. They look at what now looks more to you like an altar, and this looks like it was some kind of chapel. They lift their heads, and they look up towards a stained glass window of a beautiful silver dragon behind the altar where did that come from what the i pulled no, it they, on they, they don't worship a dragon they worship the I, of course <laughs> yeah I, 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 I pulled it on so i would have a token for my day but it was a bit bigger than anticipated yeah. nay. i just lost visual on the entire oh no i deleted the bonus <laughs> yeah you deleted <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, okay. Let me pull him back out. There we go. I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> Head rush. <laughs> Turned Ooh. into a newt. All sorts oh, of newt. All sorts of newt. Mike, moves. you're not allowed to come back to IHOP. <laughs> 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 oh man, all sorts of oops. <laughs> um, they anyway, they they slowly in unison all rise. They all look up at this beautiful window behind the altar. They stand and they turn, pretty much in unison, and lift their swords towards you and start to advance. Uh, I stand in front uh, of Vlad now. Uh, that seems like the wrong kind of light. I, I bring, I bring up my shield. You know what? You know what? Here, here, no, Epotus. Uh, no, right. Epo Epotus, no, Epotus, Epotus will go first, and then he will pull out the sword and use and and try to keep it so that the wall, the wall and Dirac are between him and Victor. Yeah, is there still there's still daylight in that room? There's a whole bunch of daylight in that room. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Victor's just kind of hiding behind the door over here. Like, <laughs> no, you guys, good. Good. It's it's good. Good. I'm Have good. Fun. You guys got this right. <laughs> I'm good. Just... I'll pass. Tell me so, is, so I actually have a question: Is the wording on the sun sword that it always starts at fifteen fifteen, or when does you, it keep? When you pull it out, it's fifteen. But you can then. Uh, command it to go to five or two larger i think there's there you can raise it and lower it from that width you can use a bonus action to increase or decrease the radius by five feet integral uh, intervals to a minimum of five feet or to a maximum of 30 feet because i'm a nerd and i know these things i also have to say you guys are the worst holy men the barbarian here is thinking, hey, diplomacy first. Let's see if we can talk to these guys first. Nope. You're going to throw a daylight spell, and then you're going to throw up your daylight spell. Well, he said you bring them back to the light. I threw a light at them. That that might not be a literal light. That might be more I'm like a guessing metaphorical. Not. I'm guessing I'm, so. You're supposed to be the one who should be doing this. I don't know what I'm doing. Roll for initiative. Thanks, Vlad. The worst holy men. The 90 worst holy men. 90% of this campaign is Vlad not knowing what he's doing. This is true. And I'm at the bottom of the initiative order again. Good for you! Hey. 15 <laughs> and 6. I will take that 15. <laughs> Forgot to collect your to click your token. No. Only one is uh, Victor. He got. He gets advantage on him. Oh, okay. Oh, me? No, yeah, I get advantage, so I I roll twice. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, yeah, I got a, a thing. So, I feel bad. I got two things. I, I feel bad. I'm, pro I'm going first, and I have no idea what I'm going to do. You pass your turn. Did I not write nope. this down? I'm gonna figure something out, but I don't know what yet. So she hasn't called for us to go yet, so. Yeah, let me just double check a couple of things here. Uh... I thought I had this. Oh, maybe it's in this chat. Um, oh, okay. Um, doesn't seem to oh, match. Oh, crap, my learned it's... languages list is gone from Sylvia. I don't know what I, remember, what I have on her. Um, give ev everyone who can see inside the room, give me a perception roll now that you can clearly see into the room. That would be a POTUS, Dirac, and Vlad. Yeah, you put it, it just has tunnel vision, right? Oh, let me scroll back down. Perception, you said? Yes. Yes. Eleven. 
I Vlad, only have tunnel vision, but slightly less. 28. Vlad sees quite a few things. He can see symbols around the room that are clearly uh, uh, Morning Lord. And he can also see that directly above the um, altar area, there is some kind, the ceiling just like disappears. You can't see the top of it. It goes up much higher than any of the rest of the room. It, there's some kind of tower or opening that goes straight up above the altar. And it is Sylvia's turn first. What have you decided what you are going to do? Yeah. Um, I'm first going to ask what the heck just happened. Because I'm still not sure what just happened in that room. Um, I will then... Let's see here. Double checking what I have on my spell list real fast. Uh, that won't do anything. That won't do any good. That won't do any good. Um. Hmm. Yeah, she's gonna make her. She's gonna make her way over and try to peek inside. And go. Oh God! Bright lights. <laughs> and um. Yeah, just went from like a dim interior to two sources of day. Yeah. I can see the sun. <laughs> um, I am the sun. No, you're not. Uh, let's see. Shoot, I can only do one of these. Alright, um, better not to do any. Inspire me. Get bent. Inspire. <laughs> I am going to babble on a long, ridiculously weird speech about how setting the room ablaze in the most holiest of light may or may not be the greatest idea ever. And just to spite, I am going to give the, uh, I forgot how many bardic inspirations I could actually give out. <laughs> you should, it should be equal to your charisma mana. So, five? Okay. So, uh, I'm going to give one to Ipotus, I'm going to give one to Duroc, and I'll give one to Victor so he can stay alive. I think you can do once per turn. Uh, can I, is it once per turn? I don't know. I it, thought what, it, are you, what, what are you doing, Bardic Inspiration? Yeah. Once yeah, it's turn, one, it's one, it's, it's once per turn, and you okay. use up one, yeah, it's a bonus action to do one. Yeah, so, who, yeah, so I'll just bonus action do one, and I'll give to Duroc. How do you I, inspire him? Like I said, the long babbling speech about why the blinding light is a bad idea. He's just going. He's just I'm, nodding. Going. I'm like, this yeah, you're sense. you're right. This makes sense because I wanted to diplomacy them, not blind them. <laughs> he said, "Bring the light." We brought literally all of the light. We're the best. Derek, Derek is a dumb barbarian, and he even knows it's not literal light. Uh, no, we're the together. best holy men. All you are the light. worst holy men. <laughs> Uh, to be think fair, so. they are called the Dawn Lord. I think it's the sword, or it has to be something else that we don't know of yet. Or it's something to do with the son of Lothander standing behind. Uh, I mean, we might, we might we just need to take him out. So. Just, as, just the thing, none of you guys have investigated further enough to figure out exactly what this is. So you just kind of jumped to a conclusion. Yep. Welcome I, to the I, <laughs> So uh, it is Derok's turn then. Can I get into the room, or is Epotus... it's double doors so you can get okay. through? Yes. All right, I'm gonna stand this side to block the doorway, and I like kind of look back. Should have used words, not magic. I'm gonna hold my turn. My action, or my. Re I guess my action is when they get close enough, if they attack, I'm going to attack back. Okay. I'm going to also... Can I say something, or is that going to require that action? No. I wanted to say something to the speech, ghost. Speech is a free action. 
Uh, I tell him, hold, we're not here to fight. We're here to help. Very good. We'll see what their reaction is in a moment. And Victor, you are uh, hanging back and trying not to pee your pants as the uh, daylight almost singed you into the netherworld. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's almost nostalgic for Victor because he hasn't had to deal with this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> he to Barovia. This used to be pretty standard. <laughs> yeah, POTUS, what are you going to do? I was spoiled by the weather. Um, <laughs> he's listening to Dirac. And he can can he tell if they look? Do, do, are they so they're looking at us? Are they like just full armor? They are full armor, and they are wearing helms that have wings on them. Then he will take his sword, sheath it, and then um cast silent image to create uh, the appearance of that uh, fiery dragon entity um, right here. Okay. So the sword has been sheathed. So now there's only the massive amount of daylight in the room. Exactly. Instead of the incredible amount of daylight in the room, and uh, as he's as when he's done casting this, he says, "Night." <clears throat> Sorry, Night I feel like that's what a poet actually did. <laughs> I'm not good at the speaking thing. Night, you need to remember <laughs> who you were and your oath. That's my turn. Okay, I want to... Now, roll of persuasion. What? I yeah, roll... call on you to remember your oath. Yep, and that is exactly what you need to do is uh, persuasion uh, after that. Yay, 13. He's more of the intimidating kind of drill sergeant than the go get him guys. <laughs> they, there is a stutter step for a moment. They all stop and you can see them turning and looking at each other as if there is the slightest confusion. And then one of them, the one that is in the north middle, says with a hollow voice but fairly strong brothers remember our oath defend to the death wrong oath wrong oath and they move <laughs> forward and but they step around the fire like they are giving it reverence and they move forward uh, 10, 20. Yeah, they would be able to move up to you and Dirac. Dirac, you, uh, they are. I don't have a weapon in my hand. Uh, uh, Dirac, you can use uh, your attack because they are raising their swords. They look like they're about to attack. If they're not attacking, I'm not attacking. My my action was that if they come to attack me, if they are going to physically attack me, my reaction is well, to okay. attack. They are they are giving every indication. They're raising their swords and preparing to strike. So I don't know if you want to uh, if you want to do it after they strike. That's fine. But they are striking. That it's going to be they it's going to be after they're striking me if they're going to follow through because I'm going to try and one more thing before I go all out. All right. Um. So uh, the two on your side strike with, uh, they are holding their long swords with two hands and they bring it down towards you. So there are, let's see, multi, yeah, they're multi attackers. So you are going to get four swings on you. Ouch. Which are coming up very good so far. What's your armor class? 
18, I just adjusted it because of uh, it was still at the 20 with the shield. All four thing, of them miss. One of them bounces off some of your leather and protective brass pieces right. or whatever you've Bounce got on. I, I, it, it, bounces off, it bounces off of my bare chest. Yeah. yeah. All that, yeah, all that uh, <laughs> stuff, all those muscles, it just bounces right off. It As they swung, it just like kind of swats you with the flat of the blade and you realize you just barely missed uh, getting hit. And Apotus, you get the same thing on you. One, two, three, four. Uh I gotta make Apple sure. Apple did say. Uh, Apple had the AFK. He did type out. If they attack Apotus, he pulls his blade out and swings. No smites unless a crit. I got See? it. I've got I got it. Shoot. All right. Um, the first attack on him is a crit. Ooh. Um, do we want to oh, wait for him to? Mine. Yeah, for him to come back. The set. Let me look at his armor class real quick. It is AC twenty one. Yep, uh, and the second one missed, the third one missed, and the fourth one missed. So it's one critical attack that would be for 17 slashing damage. All right, so you and he, I guess, have actions that you're going to do. I don't. I suppose his is on his turn. Yours is now. You yeah, held your action. He used his action for the silent hit. Dear so they have attacked. Yeah, they have attacked, so I'm going to attack back. I'm not... Well, I can't rage, because that's a bonus action. I mm -hmm. can only do my attack action, and it's only one attack. I can't do my second right. attack, right? Yeah, this is just sort right. of like a reaction. Yep, so I will go ahead and thrust the spear. I will not. It's a 10. Yeah, they turn out Apple, to you got... have stronger uh, armor than you expected, and it just thuds against their armor. Oh, sure. Apple, you got... There were four attacks on you. One of them oh. critted, the other three missed. You took okay. 17 slashing damage. I right. already took it off. Do I get to do an attack or did that? Well, uh, you didn't say you held an action. You used your oh, action. Oh, no, it's still there. It's still the same turn. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. 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 Um, now it's yeah. Vlad's turn. Vlad strides forth. His cloak of the, uh, his cloak of the Don Munch billowing, takes out his holy symbol of Lathander, and says, "You dare to abandon your oaths here in the chapel of Lathander itself." Give me a persuasion roll. Can I cast guidance on myself? I, uh, you, yeah, you can use an action to do I that. Mean, that's an action. Yeah, it would be, a, it would be an action. Yeah. Okay. So I'll cast guidance on myself before. I... Okay. Don't, don't bother. With that roll, you're okay. Even they... twenty. <laughs> you, they. There is a moment when you can see their eyes like glowing red with hatred through the things and when you call upon Lathander's name they drop again to their knees and plant the swords again in front of them and the leader's voice that hollow voice rings out again we have sworn to defend until Lord Argenvost has returned. But they have mm. ceased to attack at this moment. <coughs> you are attacking the only hope of Lord Argenvost's return. We're the only ones who stand against the Dreadlord, and you seek to end us. Bound by our oaths for eternity. Where is your lord now? What remains resides in the Raven Loft. So we have to save a werewolf person and a dragon? Am I hearing this right? Yes. Sounds about right, yeah. Well, 
No. Seems legit. We, um, Not until the light has returned can we be freed from our oaths. And we will free you from your oaths when we return your lord. But you must give us safe passage outside of your keep. You keep your word, we will keep ours. There is something we seek here that may help us retrieve your lord. There is a long, empty pause. I can speak only for us. The O's must be kept until the light shines again. It must be returned to the beacon. <coughs> Is this blood? Vlad points yes, at Sylvia. Oh. The... It, it, do you think that's the missing part of the spell from the door? I think it might be. <gasps> I have no idea how to fix it. Vlad that. points at his mace, which is still lying in the middle of the ground, uh, and giving off daylight. He says, This light, is this the type of light that you need? No. The light. Of Argenvost. I think I know what they seek, but we. Uh, it's probably best that we don't say it in front of them. They need Argenvost's power to return here. Vlad will go forward and pick his mace back up, stuffing it under his cloak so that it's not, you know, keeping Victor out anymore. So the light uh, disappears? The sunlight I, is effectively covered. Okay, Victor, I you're safe to move Victor. forward. I would not. I yeah, just. Victor as, does not do so yet. <laughs> <laughs> just as an OOC side note, given who these people are, I would not have Victor enter this room. Yes, exactly. I'm. I'm actually going to leave the room and make sure that Victor does not come in. Call it, a, call it a bad hunch, but if they were fighting against Strahd, they see one of his kind, it's not gonna go well. <laughs> Vlad <laughs> is going to stride forth to the altar and take out a... What's it called? The Arkansas. The Arkenstone! <laughs> uh, oh uh, he's going to take out a block of incense and light it on the altar. So, I'm just gonna like squeak into the room. What happened to the light that's now missing? Give me a perception roll, Vlad. Can I cast guidance on myself? No, or no. this is not something that I didn't. Eh, that's all right. You now are capable of looking straight up, and you can see that straight above you there is some kind of high tower or peak of the castle that you had not noticed before, and it goes straight up into some kind of room with an odd apparatus hanging at the ceiling. Vlagis is staring straight up and not saying anything. He starts to turn towards these stairs to the north. Okay. Uh, I'll be right back. Where are you going? Upstairs. Are you sure that's wise? Are you sure? No. <laughs> Copyright infringement. <laughs> it's it's my copyright. Yeah. <laughs> Vlad, uh, after why uh, after Epotus asks if that's wise, Vlad says no, but I think it's something that needs to be done, and just keeps going. All right. Uh, I'm still waiting for the others to get back here so I can tell them what I think it is. Epot Epotus dissipates the silence. I'm I'm at the doorway, so. All right, is anyone going with Vlad? 
or are you all no, going Epotus, to remain down here? No, Epotus is going with Vlad. Durok, keep an clerics. eye on things. Durok, keep an eye on things down here. Roar, if you... Oh, no. Oh, no. And Epotus will follow Vlad. Okay, there. one second here. Let me... Don't you know... Yeah. You guys are the, the, wor cleric. the worst... The worst holy men. Sure. To be All fair, right. Epotus never said he was a holy man. He always presents himself you're, as a... You're a paladin. I'm a holy, holy man, and I got these guys to stop attacking us. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh... <laughs> You climb the stairs up to the balcony area of the um, thing. There are doors to either side of another a large mural and a beautifully carved oaken chair on this balcony that looks down onto the chapel below. It is clearly a scene of the type where a noble lord or king would have a regal chair and would attend church services, but be separated from all the others that were down below. Uh, you can clearly see that this is where somebody of great regal stature would have sat to observe any holy ceremonies that were going on. There are doors on either side of the chair to the back. Does Vlad feel any particular pull? In what sense? In a deja vu sense. No. Okay. No. Your your backstory will not have anything particularly significant other than just a kind of a loose um, feeling of having heard the myth or something, but nothing more. Epotus okay. looks at that strange hanging apparatus. Yeah, I was going to say Vlad does this. It is still above you. It how just far, goes How up. far above us? Oh, uh, let's see. It looks like it's about uh, two more stories above you. It goes way up into the mm. air. And the, tower, and the tower just keeps going up. Yes. Would I have seen this when I was in the room with them? If you went to the altar area, you would be able to see it. But you have oh, to be standing to in altar. front of the altar to look up and see this. It's like a hole that goes up into a tower. Are there stairs or a platform to get to? You can continue going up these stairs, or you can go into the building that the doors will open into. Vlad will continue going up the stairs. Okay, then in that case, Epotus I've got will to... will follow him. All right, let me... I'm going to have to Come put off, everybody bro. onto another map, and I'll have to set you, you can, guys... You can, actually, you can actually drag our icons from uh, the color from the color area. You can actually drag our names onto a specific room and have just those people go to that room. Okay, um, the others will, I, I guess they'll just see what they're seeing. Yeah, I, mean, it's, I, I, mean, never, I, mean, I know yeah, this exists. I've never yeah. tried doing it. I'm going to try. It's, it's funky. Um, how, I don't, it's on another, completely another map. Can I drag you onto another map? Because it doesn't appear. Yeah, what you, do is you, what you do is you, you click the little banner square thing to bring down the rooms. And you have to where, have where the room is, and you can you click Mink's name, drag it onto that room, and my name, and drag it onto that. Oh, from or, the... or if it's easier, if it's easier, just it's, it's just if you want to keep the information separate. Otherwise, from the uh, character uh, sheet listing. No, from the from the, the names at the bottom of the battle mat, where yeah. it says Crone, Kyle, Riz, Mink. Oh, okay, yeah. that's what I didn't know. All right, let me. And then to bring us, and then to bring us back, you'll in the little banner parts up at the top, you'll just drag um, our icons back to the party. I see. Aha! Uh -huh. All right. Now let me. Uh, I'm. Let's see where I've, where you wound up when I did that, because I've got to. Okay. Very good. Um, let me put you where you came out then 
you would come out here uh, at this point you have nothing to do but go up there is no floor where you are now that you can exit out of you can only continue going up the stairs one at least one more floor yeah, this will do that yeah all right uh, let me get the there it is all right let me take you over to the other half of this map so while you um dawn watch go upstairs uh, now that we're no longer going to be done watch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did it's, have it's something been, to say quick. It's been enough. Well. Sorry. It's been, it's been fun. It's been fun. So yeah. my new character. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even joke about I have. The 12th son of a POTUS. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's his long lost uncle. Um, <laughs> you POTUS? come out in a room. A very narrow room and you very suddenly as you come up the stairs panting a little bit you come up and you are looking straight at a phantom that is equipped with a longbow would you roll for surprise please like initiative oh great so, so am I doing like dex an just roll? do a dex roll dex dex roll while while they're Woo. doing this, I'm just letting the DM know. Yeah. I'm just letting the, the DM know that I went to tell Victor, stay in the room, do not go in here. There's ghosts here that will likely kill you on sight. And I'm going back towards the table to kind of look up where they're walking so that I can try just, to get a better like look up at what it is. Tower, just never come and make sure I hear them calling out if they need help. Victor kind of wanders off. Um, and starts uh, investigating that sarcophagus again. <laughs> like, he's pulling out the shelves, you know, kind of applying that carpentry experience. And I need a phantom mm -hmm. character up here. One second. Yeah, this is why the initiative roles for players are separated by P. There it is. He is this one. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to open the page. Come on. There we go. All right. Roll 20 is going into it. So I've been working too long and I'm going to go slow attack again. Uh, the Phantom is equipped he's holding a a longbow and he was aiming it out of a an arrow slit window but as he hears you coming up the stairs he swings and he fires at one of you and i'm going to give a roll oh, here real POTUS, quick because he thought this is first okay if the potus is coming up first then he would be firing at you he fires and come on. There. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Dirac. If you are up there, you will see it. You can look straight up to see what's up there. Okay. Um. And he rolls a 13, so he missed. He will immediately afterwards be dropping his longbow in preparation clearly to draw a sword that is at his side. It is your um, move, Epotus. I've got to see. Yeah, let me, uh, I'm going to move this. I'll tell you when, I'm just going to use the same thing and I'll tell you when your turn is. Epotus, okay. it would be yours first. Yeah, we're gonna sunblade this bit. Uh, presumably, he's undead. Yes, it's a it's a ghostly phantom of some kind, and I've got to see about his twenty one. Twenty one to hit. Yeah, it is a hit. Oh, so that's fourteen radiant, and then nineteen to hit with eleven. That is twenty five damage, and he takes the whole thing. 
I was going to say that, that uh, no, it's a living person. He just grabs the side of his unmasked face and goes, Oh, all I wanted to do was make music. And then um, as a bonus <laughs> action, I'm going to uh, consume two sorcery points to create a first level. All right. And um, he now moves in uh, and swings the long sword that he has drawn at you. He is a multi, so one... Two. My apologies, I had a home distraction. We are fighting something? Yes, you are. Yeah, there's a specter in my way. The first roll is a 22, the second one's a 15, so the first one gives you hit. 5. Uh, it says force damage. It's not uh, force damage. Yeah, by golly. It is considered force okay. damage, not uh, slicing. Um, some kind of magical damage. Uh, so 5 force damage that uh, you have taken from his longsword attacks. Vlad, it is your turn. I am calling the turns, Vlad, because I'm using the same turn from the other page. Okay. Uh, Vlad's just going to cast Sacred Flame. And he needs a deck save. Because I can't reach this thing, can I? If we're in a one... If we're in a single file line going up yeah you could probably look like look through me and like all right having all kinds of problems roll 20 is getting real slow as it always does about this time uh it needed a 17 nope it rolls a 13 so it does not save it takes six of the radiant damage it uh it has clearly been hit but looks like it's still got some tick left in it. Uh, it is a POTUS's turn. Double slash with the lightsaber. Hit, hit. That's and a then crit. on that second one, I'm going to blow. Wait, hold on, uh, hold on, hold. Don't blow anything okay. yet. Twenty-eight, okay. so thirty-eight, 20, yeah. thirty-eight, th uh, yeah. forty-seven. He he evaporates. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, never mind. I won't blow anything. Christ. Uh, when, Epotus says, all right. When you get to this room, you realize that it is merely a defensive room. There are arrow slits all the way around you. You look out onto a portion of a roof, which is the gray that's out there. Let me look at how you are seeing this so that I know exactly what you can and can't see on this. Let me take this completely off. There we go. Um, you look out onto oh a portion of roof and you look out onto a flat rooftop of a castle. This is where the the defensive area was with the crenellated uh, uh, area and so forth where people could stand in defense of the castle. You can see a great deal of destruction and that there was some kind of building that was in the center of the roof. You can also tell that this center area where you were looking up from the altar is like barred from you. You can't actually get into it from this side but you can tell as you look out onto the flat roof that there is a walkway going in a direction that looks like probably there is an entrance yes exactly okay. so it looks like somehow you'd get up here presumably one of these other towers and you could come out and then go to the, whatever this device tower is that's the kind and then of thing this here is totally blown away that's been totally blown away, and the dev the stuff that you saw hanging and so forth would be in this large area that is blocked off to you that you can't see in. It was it had some kind of very specific access to it. All right, let's head back down. We're not going to be able to get anything useful here, but we do know that there is a way to get to that device if we need to, and it's presumably one of the nearby towers. And uh, you put us a little motion that we should probably start hitting. All right. Now, hopefully, you can see the the old map again now, right? 
Then we'll okay, just then you would keep, that, keep yeah, heading back down. I will put you back down on the lower level. Oh, you guys are coming back now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We got good information. All right, I there you are. I have a question that I will send to the DM. If I can click on names. I cannot click on names for some reason. There we go. No name close to you. If you're sending it in, don't send it in the Discord because nope. I, yeah, because I have nope, to close it's, it's down the... the videos to see it on Discord. All only thing I see so far is that you have questions, so I'm just waiting for what they are. It, it's a whisper in the in the end game chat. Okay, I don't see it yet. All I see I'm, is I'm, the. I'm I, typing. Okay. Okay. Yep, I'm typing. All right. So it looks like. York, Sylvia. Yeah. So uh, it looks like mm. that uh, device. There, there's a um, a roof uh, on the on the castle that has been completely blown away. Um, but going up either of these towers seems to just send you to a defensive turret as opposed to an actual access to the roof. Uh, it goes up about. Four, it's about four stories high. So, this floor, next floor, next floor, top floor. Uh. Um, somewhere around the third or fourth floor is the roof level. Uh, it looks like there were some other towers nearby, probably at the up, probably the level above this one, that go up and uh, give you access to the roof. And the roof is it's demolished. There was some building that was there, probably uh, you know, the Lord Chambers, but it's, I, it's been blown I mean, away. Why don't we ask mm, so we'll just point at the ghost we'll just ask them what was up there. And, I mean, if we're helping them, they should be able to answer some simple questions. I don't right. know if they will be of help or if we might anger them again. Well, it never hurts to never hurts to ask until they turn around the point of sword at you. It was there were knights of the silver what? Dragon? Yes. The silver dragon? Okay. Mm -hmm. Knights of the Silver Dragon. Where did your lord reside when he was here? He had chambers above. On the roof. No. All right. When the Dread Lord came, did he take anything, or did he simply just destruction, destruction? And we failed in our oath. Forever must we keep our oath. We did not defend Lord Argenvost, so we must fight to defend. Are you... Must you remain here, or are you able to defend your lord's honor? El Forever here, until we are freed. So, what... I, and just crazy question. What exactly is the light that you're looking for from your lord? Is it something spirit? Some, I'm just trying to get an idea. I mean, I, Sylvia, I think I know what we need to find, but it is best that we don't say it in front of the spirits. Pow wow in the other room so that Victor isn't too low. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Victor? Yeah, he, 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 he said he wanted a round. Yeah, Victor's got like a sawhorse out by the uh, sarcophagus. <laughs> Victor, working away. <laughs> like, oh, what? Victor, what are you doing? Uh, just the project that I was bored. What? Yeah. What? Uh, what's going on? Front so, the, front the, front the. He's sawing off the <laughs> the shelves of the sarcophagus. Quit making your bed. <laughs> when he makes his bed, he really makes his bed. 
So we, uh, yeah, there were four knights of the Silver Dragon. Presumably, they've been trapped here for, you know, Almator knows how long, and uh, they need a light to bring them out of darkness and for their oath to be fulfilled. And we need to, well, in order for them to be filled. Yes, well, in order for them to be um, lift, their curse to be lifted, they'll need to um, their uh, either their their light has to be returned. Something about a beacon as well. You said you sounded like you had an idea, dear. Yes. I think their light is their lord. Argenvast. Makes sense to me. Do you think we need to return the skull here? I think so. Savid told me a story about the dragon and his knights fighting against the devil. And the devil won and took a prize. And that was the dragon's skull. That could be the eternal trophy part. Uh, That gives me an idea. It, and I and also, bring out the Book of Straw, and I check it to see if it changed. The- it is not changed, but I uh, certainly that passage about the eternal trophy catches your eye very heavily. Huh? I think that this skull is probably what also arms this trap, because the trap outside it does not work. The trap comes from the head of the dragon. Well, it, it might not work because Argonvoss is dead. Or it might have been tied to his. It might have been tied to his life energy. Or it could be tied to the beacon, which could be his skull. Like it, it, it no. could be tied to him in living, but it could be the, tied to his. What skull if the death. beacon? What if the beacon is the, there's a device above the chapel? What if that's the beacon? The beacon what they said, the, be... they said the beacon needs to be returned. Yes, yeah, but but, okay, but so... that's that might just be a housing for the beacon. The most the most likely place for a beacon would not be a defensive structure at the gate. It would be in the chapel. Well, no, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is Why that this beacon needs to be returned. And find out. This beacon needs to be returned, and then the okay. trap will work again. It doesn't have to be okay. returned to the trap. It needs I, to be Sylvia, returned before you start joining house. in the conversation, where are you standing? Uh, I thought I moved myself with them. Never mind. Yeah, no, I would. I would have followed along. Sorry. So remind me why we want to rearm traps. I thought we didn't like traps. But we don't like traps, but we also don't like that Vistani man just waltzing around anywhere. My my greater concern would be if if these are knights of Argonvost, I want to end their curse. <laughs> I, I can only speak for myself and possibly Vlada's lock in this, but we should lift their curse because... You're a cat. That is what my concern is as well. I, spirits should not be the, trapped in the realm of the living. They should continue okay. on with their and, afterlife. And, and, and speaking of Didn't traps... You have the, a bunch following you around like a couple days ago. Either way, the trap that the, the trap at the front is probably either... It'll either be returned when the beacon is lit, but I doubt that it itself is the beacon. I think that it's the well, device no, I, in that. I think you're misunderstanding my words. I'm not very good at speaking. I'm not saying that the trap is a beacon or that it'll turn back on. Like, when this light, what I think is the the dragon skull is returned, everything that works within this castle will return to working order again, including that trap. That this beacon is, it'll, it'll allow the spirits to pass on but everything else within the castle will continue to will be able I to work s- again. I still don't know that the skull itself is the beacon. We need to, we need to investigate more. There's probably some document somewhere that survived that has more information. I still say we just I ask them, I am uh, I'm going to we add one asked them. Let me add one thing that is the two of you were up in the guard tower. 
uh, I realize you would have noticed from there because the arrow slits went all the way around that tower. You would look as you went to the north and uh, northeast, looking out onto the grounds of the castle. You look down in that quadrant onto a graveyard and a rather decorative building that uh, had uh, it had a tile roof, a rather attractive blue tile roof, and it had silver dragons at each of the corners of this roof. It was oddly shaped, but there were silver dragons at the corner of this, and it was inside the graveyard as if it was a giant mausoleum. Oh, I would suggest to go here, but I don't know this information. Yeah. Epotus shares this information. Let's go. We All should right. probably go there. This is where I'm going to uh, leave it. You can either next week go upstairs to explore more, or you uh, there are doors that went out of the chapel out towards the graveyard if you wish to use those. Um so there are several ways that you can get out towards the graveyard if you want to explore in that direction. And then, obviously, the grand staircase inside the foyer would take you up uh, to higher stories in the building itself, if that's what you want to do. So you can discuss during the week and decide which you want to do next week. Whichever you want to do is fine. But you now have... You don't have answers, but you certainly are beginning to formulate what some of the questions look like. And it is the question that has to be answered to earn this level. So it will be an interesting exploration as you go through this. So if anybody has any further statements to make, we will mention to turn in on, let's see, we st what is this coming? Yeah, we've still got a, uh, uh, are you sure on this uh, Saturday, right? Yes, I don't we, think we're... Yes, we, we will have, are you sure on the 15th? We will be off on the 22nd for okay, Christmas, so... but then we will be back on the 29th. I will not we will... be there on the 15th. We will have one more week of Crohn's before we have a two-week hiatus because of uh, things that are going on because we're a little closer to the actual holidays. So I will be taking a two-week hiatus at the end of the year. So we'll have one more week and then we will enter, I guess, basically a new season as we start up in January. So it ought to be rather interesting as we see what is going on with some of the secrets as you are getting very close to the secrets that are needed for Ravenloft. This ought to be interesting. Any other comments from anyone? Yeah, I completely forgot why we even came here in the first place, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see that. I just, know, I just know that this has something to do with the dragon. and Everybody the, uh... mentioned that there was a great power here and that it had it had stood for the longest time against Strahd and you wanted to find out what this power was. Epotus especially was curious about this dragon for the dragon, right. for familial reasons. And um, so you decided to see if the powers that were here in any way could assist you in your fight is basically why you came here. You have okay. pretty much all of the artifacts that you need. You have only the fifth part of the prophecy to fulfill, and that will be fulfilled, as she clearly stated, in Ravenloft itself. So that mm -hmm. is not something you can find or get until the final battle. Yeah, yeah we're, we're basically just out here. We're, we're, we're coming to... We went to Argonvoss, and then we're heading to the Amber. We're, 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 we're basically... Hedge our best. So, okay, so we're basically we're just finishing up all of our Skyrim side quests before tying, we go... Tying up your, yeah, you're tying up your loose yeah. ends, and basically, exactly. you know there is... Ends. You know there is a great power that might distantly be able to help you here and that there's a great mm. power that might be able to hinder you in the amber temple they these are the good and the evil balanced kind of thing and you're trying to see what these powers are reduce the bad guys increase the good guys is basically what's going yeah. on here yeah 
If it doesn't look like we're gonna find anything, we should go. We should turn around and go to Amber. Yeah. Searching. <laughs> we're all we're already here. Let's finish this candy bar. Yeah, before you... seriously. Oh uh, uh, yeah. And here's the thing. We we could go to Ravenloft and like rescue the werewolf yeah. and try to find the dragon remains, but we don't have to fight Strahd. We could just find the stuff and see, leave. See, here's the plan: is we suddenly turn around and go to Amber Temple, then get stopped at the pass and go back to Velaki for one, and stop yeah. and go do something else. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, well, no, we'll... we're not gonna stop in Velaki for like another like five more. And and anywhere. that we will discuss elsewhere. But yeah. um, but anyway, um, I know the reference, but we'll discuss it elsewhere. Um, nevertheless, you have a lot of very curious things to find out in this location. So it is a powerful location if you choose to use it. We will see what is going to go on. And if nobody has anything else, we will wave good night to you. And hope to see you again next week. And good night from Crone's Crucible. We hope to have lots of fun on the last episode of the year and on the one for next year. Good night, all.